everyone. Happy November. Um, it is almost Thanksgiving, so that's super exciting. And almost Thanksgiving means almost Christmas. I can't. I just love Christmas. So today we're going to talk about my graffiti bookmarks um, because I started out just doing graffiti stickers and I was like, wait a minute. I kind of want to put this in a book. I should make it a bookmark. So bam, bookmarks. Okay, so I know I showed you guys this one. You can see it. Oh, check that out. It's got a little bit of glimmer to it. Yeah, man. Um, so this one says late night. Um, I already talked to you guys about this. Uh, my husband waits until the day of to write his papers. I should probably not say he that. He writes really good papers. It just so happens that they are on the day of um, the due date. But that's neither here nor there. So I wrote this, or I drew this, um, as he was writing one of his uh, novels. So second is, um, this one is Skim Through. Um, and it's super big to put in a book. Um, I didn't really think about that. I was just like, oh, the more graffiti, the better. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is this is a little big, um, but it's still super cute, and it's also got some shimmer in it. It's supposed to be a matte finish. I don't know why. I don't know why they're so shiny. It is what it is. I'm not sure. This one is appropriate uh, for a book because it is small and it also has a little a little bit of pizzazz on the end of it. Um, I also I was kind of wanting to do like a chain or something on the end of it. You know, because it looks more like graffiti-ish and chains and... Of course, that kind of makes it sound like I'm talking about prisoners. Which I'm not. But I guess if you do graffiti, you know, uh, not smartly, you might... It, anyway, it doesn't... That's... We're not talking about that today. So, since we are talking about bookmarks and books and things, um, I thought that maybe it would be kind of cool to share with you... Uh, my five favorite books. Okay, number one It has to be the Bible, right? Although technically this is my favorite 66 books. So I guess I'm covering what's 66 plus 5 71 I hope that math's right. That's bad. They made me take a math class in law school like they don't like the the uh, closest I got was tax and like I literally cowered in the front so that I wouldn't get called on, especially on the class on IRAs, please shoot me. Specifically, this apologetic study Bible is super dope um, because it has like all these, uh, see, does the Old Testament misquote the New Testament? Yeah. So it just has all these like articles and stuff in it. And uh, I mean, now granted, it takes solid stances on things. So like, you know, you just be ready because it, um, it'll punch you in the gut. Okay, so if you want a good punch in the gut, good punch in the soul, this'll punch you. Mm -hmm. Next, number 67, uh, okay, two, number two. Bam, The Epic of Eden by Sandra Richter. Rich Couture, Richard Couture. Um, so this, uh, this helps you understand this. So the two go pretty good. Dude, my cat just kind of ran around and scared the crap out of both me and Remy. Good Lord. Okay, from reading the Bible, I should have a spirit of fear, not a spirit of, or wait, a spirit of love, not a spirit of fear. I, I need to read it more clearly. So the Epic of Eden, um, it kind of shows you um, a framework for how to understand the whole Bible. So the Old Testament and the New Testament, how they go together. Um, for example, let me take out my bookmark. As Moses sprinkled the blood of bulls upon the people of Israel in order to ratify the Sinai, Sinai covenant. I've known that word my whole life. And yet on video, I have to say it's Sinai Ninyai. So Jesus distributed his own blood that night to ratify a new covenant. The slaves who were freed from their bondage by this new covenant were not delivered merely from Egypt, but from death itself. And 
In this new covenant, the Lord of the cosmos has served as both suzerain and sacrifice. Isn't that epic? Just the language is wonderful. Got this new light, and it's like legitimately making me sweat. Can you see it in my eyes? You can see it in my eyes. Yeah. I don't know how people make videos with these like huge lights. Like, is this hurting my irises like right now? Like, cause I feel like it's just like shooting in my face and it's making me sweat. And I'm wearing a sweater. Ugh. Number three, the sacred and the profane. Okay. Um, this one is awesome because it really just kind of um, goes through the nature of religion, right? So we live in a physical world, but we also have all these spiritual things happening. What is the deal? Let me take you through some verbiage. Hold on, let me do a bookmark out. Okay, access to spiritual life always entails death to the profane condition followed by a new birth. So that's the kind of stuff you're gonna get there. This is by Marcia Iliada, um, or Iliadi. However you wanna say your ease, like you you do it, it doesn't matter. People say it both ways, I, I don't know what to say. Last but not least, so my final two are, of course, since I'm a lawyer, um, it would only be appropriate to have some uh, lawyer stuff in there. So uh, first, I want to take you through Courtroom by Quentin Reynolds. If you hear a disgusting noise in the background, it's because there is a disgusting noise. Oh shoot, Remy, don't eat judge's food. My dog ate my cat's food. Courtroom, Quentin Reynolds. Um, this is about Samuel Leibowitz, who was a great criminal defense attorney, and he was actually able to get the prosecution to dismiss the charges against the Scottsboro boys. And I don't know if you remember that story, but in criminal defense, it's huge. Um, it was about these uh, African-American boys who were uh, accused of rape um, by these two Southern white girls. Um, and they had motives, like they had biases, like they literally just made it up. But these kids were on, on trial for murder, uh, not murder, rape, but they were gonna get capital sentences. I mean, they were gonna, they were gonna get executed. So home dog, uh, Samuel Leibowitz comes in and beast modes and uh, not only does he get the prosecution to dismiss the charges, but he also showed the Supreme Court that, hey, Alabama had nothing but white jurors. Like this is racist as all get out. Help me out here. So, uh, so he did. Um, and uh, he, they were, he was able to dismiss uh, those charges or he was able to get the prosecution to dismiss those charges. Um, it's also got some juicy murders in here, um, some, uh, you know, insanity defense and all of these wonderful, glorious things. Um, so check that one out. That's great. And I also have a quote. The best safeguard society has against police who insist upon enforcing the law through illegal means is an alert, capable defense lawyer who is equally zealous in defending the rights of both criminals and the exemplary citizen. The Constitution was written for all citizens. Mm, be still my heart. Number five, okay, is the whole reason I wanted to be a criminal defense attorney. The execution of Willie Francis, okay? Um, uh, don't watch the rest of this video because I'm about to spoil the mess out of this one because this is such a good book, okay? This, again, is an African-American boy who was accused of murder. And um, whether he did it or not is not the issue in the book. Uh, the issue was, did he receive a fair trial, a fair sentencing, and a execution that does not offend the Eighth Amendment. Um, so those are issues that will be brought up. Um, let me just say that uh, his, um, man, how can I say this without spoiling the book? Ask yourself if his first and second execution was offensive to the Eighth Amendment. Check it out. It's a good book. Like, it really is. And the hardback is super pretty. Um, you will weep through most of it. Um, and some parts gets a little wordy. So you're like, all right, come on. Like, we get it. Like, let's go, you know. Um, but it's really good. It has a lot of plot twists. 
Um, you'll be sad a whole lot, um, but it's worth it, I promise. Um, it just, it, you know, it, it, it teaches us about racial injustice. So, um, those are my five favorite books and uh, those are my bookmarks. If you want them, check out Etsy um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Okay. You're a Big Mac? Okay. All right, I didn't bring any napkins. <laughs>